What's up guys, Dr. Sean Burkhart here, older of Boulder Fit Health and Performance here in Boulder, Colorado. I am a doctor of chiropractic, fellow functional neurologist, a certified functional medicine practitioner, and a strength and conditioning coach. I'm here to help you guys in any way I can progress in your life, whether that's getting selected, injury prevention, or elite human performance. So without further ado, let's help you get selected. All right, guys, what's up? So I'm here with Dr. Burkhart, and we're going to talk about the fact that you are potentially breathing the wrong way. So in selection, getting ready for selection, and some of the tips that I've put out to you guys, a little bro science, if you will, was that in order to get your traps to stop hurting, you switch to your waistband. We could probably cut to that if Abel could find it. But that's what I said. I said, go waistband, and then when your shoulders start hurting, switch it back or when your hips start hurting switch back to your shoulders and then shoulders switch back to your hips that's just what we did and it worked for us so that's what we put out to you guys to do but that's why we're here with the doc to try and debunk some of this bro science and give you some better information so one of the things that the doc was talking about was how we could actually adjust our breathing to stop the pain in our traps so i'm going to shut my trap and let the man take over so he could help you ruck better and start breathing properly Perfect. So when I usually assess people, I say, take a deep breath. So how do you take a deep breath? What you can see is you're using a lot of accessory muscles like your traps to elevate your shoulders where that weight's already pushing down. So we try to train diaphragmatic breathing, which is breathing down into the belly. So if I were to say, breathe down into your belly and push against my resistance, diaphragm goes down, you're not lifting so much with your traps. So what I've experienced when I was working with the ruck trainer is I was breathing incorrectly. Every step I was taking, I was trying to use the same muscles to breathe that that weight was pushing down against me. When I adjusted my breathing mechanics, it helped me to keep my traps less sore, but it actually improved my efficiency moving because I was nice. getting more air into my system, able to cycle through. Um, so yeah, breathing mechanics are huge with wearing that ruck trainer. Nice, yeah. so you were experiencing the same thing with that traps just being super sore after your rucks. How much were you putting on the ruck trainer? How much weight were you rucking with? The first time I did it, I had 30 pounds in there. The second time I did it, I did 45, just to make sure I'm hitting standard. Um, but I felt it right away day one. I attributed it mostly to deconditioned, not training for that certain scenario. Mm -hmm. But after I debriefed myself, I was like, oh, you know, I'm better check my breathing mechanics, practice what I preach. So I didn't have a gap where I went out with 30 again. I went, immediately went to 45. Um, but when I changed my mechanics, uh, I, I did really well. I think I did three miles that day and no trap soreness. Nice. So how could people start breathing properly? What could they work on? And how would you recommend them starting down that process so they can alleviate the trap soreness and ruck more efficiently? That's a great question. Um, honestly, everyone needs to kind of assess their own breathing. There's gotta be a standard. This is just one example of a test saying take a deep breath. You wanna make sure you have good expansion from front to back and sides and not using those muscles so much. Um, breathing is one of those modalities, I guess you can call it, that's both conscious and unconscious. So you wanna train it consciously where you're practicing using that diaphragm so that when you are rucking and you're tired and you're hurting, that pattern's already written and you're not defaulting back to that previous mode of lifting with your traps. Mm -hmm. So um, we can give some examples of how to practice breathing consciously where you're using your diaphragm and work up from there. Okay, so they could do that anytime. Anytime. Anytime, yeah. start breathing with the belly, and then getting that comfortable and then getting used to that. So then that way when they're out rucking, they're focusing on breathing with the be belly. And then you said it helped in other ways besides just trap soreness. You said performance wise it's helping. Yeah, so if you're breathing with just your upper body, kind of sniffing air through there, you're not fully expanding your lungs. You're not getting as much oxygen as you need in there. So you're gonna fatigue a lot faster. I mean, you just, you need air, you need air mm -hmm. to move. Um, so yeah, when you can improve your breathing efficiency, your, excuse me, you can improve your breathing mechanics, you can improve your efficiency as well. Nice, and are we going for like full belly and then the top? Because I've seen the, a lot of that where um, yoga, they kind of push that, right? And are the people that are, they call it like tactical breathing. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff out there right now. Yeah. And some of the stuff out there is trying to blend like yoga with tactics. Uh, and they'll talk about breathing with your belly and then it goes up into your chest. Like, are you trying to get that 
belly and then upper chest or just avoid upper chest altogether? No, no, you're gonna still get it into your upper chest as well. There's gonna be a natural expansion. When the diaphragm goes down, you're gonna fill up the bottom of the lungs first, so to speak, and then you're gonna start to get that upper chest start to expand. But you're also wanting that lateral expansion as well. You wanna use the efficiency of your whole lung, which pretty much starts from here to here. How do you get that lateral expansion? So sometimes that's just practicing. So one exercise that they might even use in yoga as well is called crocodile breathing, where you're actually gonna lay on your stomach on the floor, you rest your forehead on your hands. When you're laying down, you're not breathing up against gravity but you have pressure on your stomach. So in order to get air in your system, you have to breathe into that, kind of like a crocodile laying down. You want me to try to demonstrate? You can do that too, yeah. All right, so what am I doing? So lay on your stomach. Okay. Put your hands together and just rest your forehead on your hands. Okay. Okay, and now if I were to just say, take a deep breath, you're gonna feel your stomach push into the floor, mm -hmm. right? Because you can't use these to lift up. I mean, you can, but you're gonna be working really hard to do that. And what I can see that you're expanding here is if I were to put my hand on your low back, you're elevating up. So five minutes of practice, you're training that diaphragm kind of through neurology, so to speak, to descend and ascend back and forth. If I were to have you lay on your side, we might need to put a towel under you just to give you a little bit more feedback because the, the shoulder width of you, but you can practice breathing into your side as well. What do you mean by that? Like how would I do that now? Yeah, so if I use my hand and I put this down here, okay. I'm giving you feedback by facilitating. You can feel my hand. So you're gonna breathe into the pressure of my hand, all right? Okay. Yeah, so now you're getting lateral expansion. You're still doing belly expansion. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird because I've never, I've never once ever thought about lateral expansion until you said that. And then once you put your hand there and then saying pushing into it and feeling that is the first time I've ever considered it, tried it, anything about lateral expansion. Yeah. So another question I have is with the breathing, does breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth, is that a myth or does that actually help? Is there a way, a better way to breathe? Does it matter if you're mouth breathing? Nasal breathing, does it have any effect? It's, it does have an effect. If you can do nasal breathing, it's just gonna be way better on you, but breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth, that's gonna happen when you're conscious thinking about it. When you start to get some miles in and wait and starting to get fatigued, you might shift to your mouth. You still need to breathe, right? Mm -hmm. um, but practicing, where you're practicing in through your nose, you're practicing expansion, you're writing a program in your brain, because when it goes back to subconscious, when you're not thinking of breathing, it should happen that way. When you get tired and fatigued or sore, you might default back, but that's just gonna be practice to unwind that a little bit. Okay, so yeah. one of the things, the main thing that we're gonna, you're recommending for all the viewers to start doing is the alligator breathing. Yeah, crocodile long, breath. Or crocodile breath, and that's for five minutes yeah, practice? Yeah, just five minutes of practice. Um, that's a good starting point for people, okay. yeah. And then do the side one, and then? Side breath too, right? Just the more you get used to feeling that expansion, when you don't do it properly, you're gonna be able to detect your own errors by feeling that. You'd rather detect your own error than starting to feel sore with that ruck trainer on your back. So you can correct it really quick. Nice, yeah. and if you guys haven't rucked enough to experience this yet, uh, Kurt was talking about it earlier, by the end of selection, our traps were so bad that it hurt to lift our arms. Like we were having trouble even lifting at all because the trap soreness was so immense. Um, and then again, that's why we recommended just switching to your, your hips. I didn't realize that there was a way to you know, eliminate trap soreness without just moving the weight pressure from my shoulders to my hips. Because then it's like, if I could just keep it in my shoulders and not have all the weight in my hips, ideally I would want you know, even. Yeah. So shoulders and hips, and then do something like better breathing exercises to get rid of that pain. So, all right guys, we hope that helps. It's something you could do at home, uh, some way to alleviate some of the bro science that we ourselves put out there. That's why we're here with Dr. Burkhart and we're gonna get as much information for you guys as possible um, so you could start training the right way and help you get selected and doing the proper techniques instead of us just putting out what worked for us because at the end of the day, just because it worked for us does not mean it's the right way to go. It does not mean it's the right thing to do. It's just us putting it out because that's what we did. A lot of the potential issues that we have now, knee problems that we have, a lot of operators have knee problems, back problems, um, and we're known to be broken. Uh, 
maybe a lot of that brokenness could be prevented by proper train up for selection um, and proper you know training while as while being operators and going on deployments so we hope this helps and we'll see you on the next video